The following video sketches the different steps in the measurement process for a measure round in chemistry, namely the content of phosphorus compounds in topsoil, and for a measure round in physics, namely the mass of an object. After watching the video, you will be asked various questions regarding similarities and differences of some basic metrological properties, such as traceability, validation and uncertainty. Phosphorus is a very important nutrient for plants. For this reason, the content of phosphorus in topsoil that is sold commercially for garden application is measured by the manufacturer. What you will see in the following video is a typical example of a measurement in chemistry. In chemical analysis, typically, there are most often various steps, shown here one by one. The sample is dried to remove water. Via aqueous extraction, the phosphorus is separated from the top soil. In chemical analysis, this kind of sample digestion and separation step most often introduce a dominant contribution to uncertainty. A chemical is added to the extract which forms a yellow compound as given in the reaction you see. The more phosphorus is present, the more intense is the colour. This is measured with a spectrophotometer. The intensity of the colour, in fact the absorbance of the aqueous extract of the sample, is then compared to the intensity of the colour of several aqueous solutions prepared from one high purity measurement standard. You will now see all these steps. In chemical analysis, the sample preparation and the separation step often introduce matrix effects, which means that the matrix, the topsoil in this case, causes a bias to the measurand. All this implies that in routine chemical measurements, the requirements regarding competence and skills of personnel are high compared to those for routine physical measurements. The content of the phosphorus in the topsoil is critical for the quality of the product. As it can vary across the production, the manufacturer measures it regularly by sampling various bags of topsoil. A plant operator brings one of these bags to the analytical laboratory. The analyst performs the sampling of the bag, so that the subsample, which will go to the analytical laboratory for measurement, is representative for the entire bag. Topsoil, like many organic products, contains variable amounts of water. Therefore, the sample is dried. This is done in an oven at 105 degrees Celsius. During this process, water and other volatiles evaporate. Thus, the sample mass is reduced. It is critical that everybody does this at a certain agreed temperature and for an agreed period of time, else there can be no comparability of the results. In other words, the measurand is actually defined by the measurement procedure, a situation that often occurs in chemical measurements. The dried sample is then passed on to the analyst who will perform the sample preparation and the instrumental measurement. The analyst weighs in an aliquot of the dried sample. In this case, you will see it is done in duplicate. To the flasks that contain the weighed dried sample, various solid and liquid chemical reagents are added. These will extract the phosphorus from the topsoil so that later on the extracted phosphorus is available to react and form the yellow compound. The extraction is performed by shaking the suspension of extracting liquid and sample for some time. The suspension is then filtered. 
The clear filtrate, which contains phosphorus, is collected. A certain volume is taken and transferred to a volumetric flask. The two flasks on the left are samples that have been extracted correctly and where analyte and matrix were properly separated. For comparison, the two flasks on the right still contain some interfering components present in the topsoil matrix. Now the colouring forming reagent is added. As you can see, there is a remarkable difference in colour due to the matrix effect. Now the absorbance of these samples is compared to the absorbance of several aqueous solutions prepared from one high purity measurement standard. Such a measurement standard usually comes from a commercial supplier and is not necessarily linked to the CIPM MRA system. Having said this, the uncertainty contribution from the measurement standard is typically negligible compared to uncertainty from sample preparation and matrix effects. Now the sample solutions and the calibration solutions are ready for spectrophotometric measurement. This is the spectrophotometer which can measure the absorbance of the solution. Absorbance of the solution is, in a certain range, linear to the concentration of the phosphorus. The absorbance of the solutions is measured spectrophotometrically at a particular wavelength. Finally, the analyst does the data evaluation, then makes the report which is signed by the laboratory responsible. Mass measurements are of course ubiquitous in the world that surrounds us. Balances are therefore used in trade and in production. Here is an example of how the mass of a bag of construction material is measured in a factory as it rolls off the conveyor belt. The principle of weighing is, of course, well known to you. The routine measurement you see is probably typical for those in physics regarding procedure and traceability. Measurement instrument in the measurement of physical quantities is crucial. The quality of the final result is mainly dependent on the calibration of the instrument used. Metrologists from an external calibration laboratory perform the calibration of the measurement instrument. Here you see them bringing in a set of weights which they will use to calibrate the instrument. Now, after external calibration, reliable measurements can be made. Typically, the end user of calibration services can now be confident that they produced trustworthy data. In chemistry, as you just saw, device calibration is just a small contribution to this and the calibration is done internally by the people who are actually doing the testing.